Is there a time though when people should quit? Did I do what I was supposed to do to become good and skillful at my craft? Every business opportunities, they all have similar difficulties. What is it? Discipline. Do not just jump because you see something, something that can make money quicker. What's up guys? Welcome to another fire episode of the Winners Club podcast. My name is Brian Tran, your host. And on our podcast, we're talking about winning. Hey, that's true, man. <laughs> that's all and we even do. Even when we don't win, we learn, and learning is a form of winning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You I got my right. co-host over there, PJ Padua. What's up, guys? How you doing? Hit him with the spiel. Yo, guys, we are a business podcast. Number one business podcast coming out this year, man. We're growing, and I really appreciate all your guys' support. But to let you guys know, we are a business podcast. Really just here to share our stories, our success tips, tips for business and ultimately anything that's going to help you guys become a boss at business. So we're going to have a fun show here. I'm going to ask a couple quick questions that I know you guys will think will be fire. So first question I want to ask you, Brian, Brian, how do you block out the noise? Because in entrepreneurship, it's probably a lot of noise out there, you know? Yeah, a lot of uh, shiny object syndrome, people bouncing around. You know, they start one thing and they do it for a little bit, have one failure, boom, yeah. leave, right? You have to do one thing first. Yeah. Become good at it. Then, you know, obviously build it up to where it does not require you, and then you can go start something new. Is that what you did? Yeah. I, I mastered one thing. Well, no. Okay, here's actually my story. This is actually a real-life example, and, and this is when I realized that I screwed up. I did real estate. I was doing okay, right? Yeah. Not great, not not bad. I was doing okay, and then I thought, oh, what a great idea. Let's open a restaurant. Yeah. Shiny object syndrome. Oh, restaurant's way better than a freaking yeah. selling real estate. It was wrong. Yeah. But I jumped into that, and then after a year of doing it, then I had to cancel it, sell it, and then I went back into real estate, and that's mm -hmm. where I kind of made my claim to fame. Nice. But that's when I realized that I, you know, by jumping, mm -hmm. you become a master of none. Yeah. Now, I learned some skills along the way that translated. So, I, you know, it wasn't a complete loss. But if I had stayed in real estate for that one year, I think I would have accelerated that growth. Yeah. Because instead, I lost the momentum. And then I had to go and rebuild that momentum. I get and it. And that's lost time. I get it. You know? So focus on that one thing, mm -hmm. master it, then you can go and do something else. Now, yeah. uh, somebody asked me a good question the other day too. It was like, how do you know when's the right time to throw in the towel? Oh, yeah, let's talk about it. And I don't even, I, you know, that's, that's a hard one because everything that I've ever done, I've always stuck it through. Yeah. And I've always, I did it until I became successful. Yeah. But maybe that's my hard-headedness. Mm. But I do believe that if you stick to one thing long enough, you do become eventually an expert. Now, how fast you become the expert is really dependent on how much time you're actually putting into your craft and your skills. Yeah. If you make a 1,000 phone calls, sales calls, mm. there's no way that you're going to be the same level as the first time, you know, call number one. Yeah. If you go out on a thousand appointments, the chances are you're naturally going to become good unless you're just, you know, absolutely doing like, you know, in, you know, uh, what is it? Einstein says that doing the same thing over and over again is insanity. Yeah. So unless you're doing the same thing over and over again yeah. and you're just really hard headed and you're not changing and learning and like advancing your skills. Yeah. You know, there's there's really no reason. I really do believe that people can become good at anything as, as long as they put their full mind, body, focus to it. I believe that too, man. You know? I 100% believe that. Like, if I really wanted to learn how to video edit, I, I think I can. Yeah, I, for sure. Would I, would I excel at your speed? Yeah. Probably not. You're pro you know, there are, I do believe that there are some natural talent to yeah, some people. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. But I'd probably get to some form yeah. of expert. Yeah. Right? If I, you know... I didn't get good at cold calling by calling two people and then quitting. Yeah. And I made hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of calls at this point. So now I can I can jump on and I can talk to people. 
I didn't get good at networking by just going to one networking event. Yeah. I got good by going to a bunch. Sometimes I went there and I was a wallflower. You know, the, my very first uh, <laughs> event I used to go to, I, I would just be one of those attendees and just sit in the back <laughs> and then go back to the room. That's a weird sight to see, bro. I can't even imagine that. Yeah, but now it's different. Right now, I don't even care about the speakers. I go, right, and I start shaking hands and I start yeah. talking to people. Yeah. But you see, like, it's over time. You develop. You get better. You get stronger. You get smarter. You learn from your mistakes. You self-analyze and I think if you do that, there's really no reason you can't succeed. I hear and you, And so man. that's why I don't think that people should, like, you shouldn't even think, like, at what point should I quit? No, you should really change the, rephrase that and said, and ask yourself, did I do what I was supposed to do to become good and skillful at my craft? Yeah. Chances are, if you're not moving the needle, yeah, you ain't doing the work. Hey, 100%, man. But... I know you said a lot of things, and I agree with a lot of them, too. But for the sake of the argument, mm. is there a time, though, when people should quit? Like, And this is, like, really the entrepreneurial territory because you're in the teeter-totter of you should be very, like, resilient. You quit when the industry is obsolete. Okay. You should know when to get out that industry yeah. because it's dying. Mm -hmm. For example, print media. Mm-hmm. If you're a journalist and you're only doing the print side or whatever, or your magazine sales, yeah, yeah, maybe you should quit and go into an industry that is booming, thriving. Yeah. That's when you should quit. Mm -hmm. But if you're in an industry that's where you're seeing people like you making hundreds mm -hmm. and millions of dollars, yeah, maybe it's you know that's a good industry to be in, and you just need to just get better at what you're doing. For sure, it sounds like. Unless it's obsolete and unless it's a dying freaking market, right? Like, uh, what are those, like, those dial-up telephones? Like, that's obsolete. Yeah. Right? But if it's something that's working, instead of looking at, like, oh, I should quit, your opinion is I should find out how to change whatever I'm doing because it's not working. Or you just you really don't like, and, and this is where it can, I can kind of believe that, you have to do things you don't like. Yeah. But like if it's really making you miserable yeah. and you hate freaking life, like, okay, maybe that's not an industry to be in. I get it. Okay. But more than most often I see people quit because they're not having success because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. No, for They're not sure. like, oh, I'm in sales. And in sales, if you're not making calls and making new contacts and, and adding new people into your, your CRM, yeah, you're not really doing your job. Yeah. I think it's you know? a loaded question, you know, trying to figure out when to quit because it's like, do you really hate it? Are you doing your work or are you just uncomfortable because it's hard and you don't know how to deal with that? Like, there's a lot of stuff, too. So I think being very self-aware. I'll give about you an example of when I would probably quit. Okay, okay like, let me hear it. Let's say I, I, I you know, I'm in sales. Uh -huh. but Let's say I start selling uh, funerals, uh, packages, okay, caskets, okay. graves. <laughs> Those guys make a lot of money. I uh, bet. Dude, I, I've, they're expensive. Those things are like per square foot, very expensive. Like my dad's tomb or whatever was, I think, what is it? However big it is, it was like yeah. 15000 or $16,000. I mean, technically, ground. everybody needs one. Technically. Yeah. So technically, look, you'll, yeah. you'll probably make a bank selling it. Yeah. Right? You're, you're constantly upselling and people will always pay because it's like, what are they going to do? It's like they're trying to send off their loved ones. I, I'd i probably quit that. Yeah. I'd probably, because it's, you, yes, you're good at selling. Yes, it's still a skill that is, you it's know. It's the environment it, thing. Yeah, but I just don't want to be, I don't yeah, want to sell that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'd probably I quit that. You know yeah, what I, mean? I get that. I get that. So that's different. Like, I don't want to be in that environment. It's not where I want to be. Then yeah. I'll quit to get somewhere else. Like, I tried it. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Yeah. So I'm going to go into a different sales, a different field. Yeah. That's a very extreme case. That is. But, but I think it also has to do with understanding prior where you want to be. Yeah. Right. So I guess it makes sense if you're like, oh, I just want to be really good in sales and opportunity arose. Well, you're still in line. Just go take yeah. your sales place somewhere else. So I like that, man. What's the but next question? I want to go. I just want to ask another question off uh, the shiny, shiny object syndrome. Yeah. Right. Two questions. One in a dollar of amount. How, what do you think makes someone an expert? Because you're saying, oh, you should be an expert. You should be good at it. But to a lot of people, it could be like, oh, I make 
<laughs> I make like $40,000 a year and I'm, I think I'm an expert. On to the next. Once you're able to remove yourself from the company, mm-hmm. uh, now this is an entrepreneur speaking, so yeah. I assume like when you have that shiny object syndrome, once you're able to step back mm-hmm. and still make the same amount of money that yeah. you were making when you were in the company or in this case, uh, sales, you built out the team and they no longer need you yeah. and you still make the same whether or not, whether you work in it or you don't mm-hmm. is when you go and you start the next thing. Yeah. But the problem is most people go out, they start selling real estate. Yeah. And then they go, oh shoot, I'm open up a restaurant. Yeah. And then they go open up a restaurant. Now they're not even, now they're not able to sell real estate. So their income actually drops. Yeah. And then the restaurant does bad and now that drops and now they're, now they have to go back. Now they're steps behind. Now the best way to do it is like if you built out the team uh-huh. and you have a listing coordinator, you have a, a listing agent, you have a buyer's agent, you have people that are going to be able to go out and run the company and still bring in revenue. Now yeah. you can go out and start something else knowing that that company is still going to bring you money. And yeah. It doesn't need you to run. Yeah. Now you can put elbow grease on the on the new business. The new business that, that will occupy your time because the problem is, guys, we don't have time. Um, it's Time is limited. Mm-hmm. And so... What you focus on expands. And if you're not, if your company isn't at that stage where it's self-sufficient and you leave it, yeah, that's when I see a lot of people downfall. Yeah. And then they end up like having their income look like a rolling hill. For sure. Up, down, up, down. Because they got they constantly have to try to balance these plates. Yeah. I you know? get it. I get it. Now, there is a way to do it. I, in my opinion is I hire, <laughs> mm. um, but that requires money. Yeah. And that requires uh, a certain level of know-how, you know? Yeah. Well, I think to be an expert, in my opinion, I think you should you should get there to the point where you can hire and yeah. go to the next. So, all right. One, the second question that's to this, to this uh, subject of shiny object syndrome. What if you're not really making any money yet or maybe like scraping by like barely anything, right? Maybe like a couple hundred bucks a month. And you're like, you find out about something new that could make that is advertised to make more money, right? Like Amazon FBA, drop shipping, you know, obviously those are very glorified, shiny things to do. What is your opinion on switching over? Because that's technically the same thing. So let's give the audience some context. Yeah. If I'm building a real estate empire and then all of a sudden I'm not making anything, and and, and Amazon FBA comes around and my idea is like I'm a jump. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna advise you guys not to because you're gonna experience the same problems yeah. that you're having here because it's not a industry problem. It is a you lack the basic f- principle and foundation mm-hmm. that is required yeah. to be successful. 100%. And I'm not saying that to insult you, but maybe you're early on and you're still developing <laughs> the basic skills. Yeah. Because in every company in every avenue, every any every um, business opportunities, mm-hmm. they all have similar difficulties. Yeah, what is it? Discipline, mm-hmm. the discipline to show up and do uh, the sales and 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 do the work. Yeah. The work may be different, right? Like building a real estate empire, building an Amazon FBA. The the actual work may be different, but if you when you boil it all down, you need the discipline to do the work. Yeah. Okay. You lack sales skills because everything in every business all is selling something. Yeah. And you don't have that skill yet. Yeah. So what makes you think if you jump over, you're going to be successful when you couldn't even, uh, you know, build that sales and negotiation skill yeah. in this industry? For sure. So I would advise don't do it. Yeah. But there are exceptions, right? Let's yeah. say Sal comes to me and say, I want you to be a part of it. I've already built up X, Y, Z. Yeah. I've already built, you know, 10 stores making this much money. I yeah. need you to help. You know, I want to help you. I want, to, I want you to run this one, blah, 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 blah. You know, you'll get profit sharing. All right. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not making nothing here maybe because I don't have the mentor. Yeah. And this guy's willing to teach me. Yeah. Um, and, and he's doing it. But then you got to ask yourself, why is he doing it? So there's, there's not, that's a rabbit hole. But yeah, that's when I'd be like, okay. Yeah. You kind of have to like read the fine lines. Yeah. Right. If it is a, if it's a, winner deal then why not do it right yeah. but to be aware to summarize what you're saying for sure to the core do not just jump because you see something something that can make money quicker right you're gonna go through the same challenges you still technically have to graduate right just 
the same thing. Kindergarten, first grade, fifth grade, you're still going to have those learning curves in that new business. And you're just going to be wasting. It's the same story of you from real estate going to Pop-Up Cafe, which is your first coffee shop, and then going back, losing momentum. Yep. And I, I have experienced the same thing, too. Like, I tried. I was making no money in video, so I was like, oh, I'm going to try drop shipping. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try trading stocks. And I do everything. Didn't make any money. And I was like, I'm going to go back to video. And then, shoo, like, you know, we went up. And I was like, okay, yeah. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but I did learn some things. So I think it's always good to. People are like, hey, I'm going to trade stock. And then they realize they got to wake up at 6 in the morning. I like that part. But, but not everybody. Yeah, and you get hella stressed out. Like, oh my god! Watching the fuck, yeah, I went watching to go, bingo I went to go open party. Down. I don't want to look at a monitor all day. Like, man, you lack discipline. You can <laughs> yeah. do it. You know, like, yeah. That's just the truth of the matter. It's the same thing for everything, right? It's the same thing for everything, guys. So stick to the course, guys. Um, I want to ask one last question. Keep it short. Keep it long. Whatever you want to do. But how do you? What is your advice to maintain like pure focus within? the things that you want to pursue, you know, the business, the trajectory that you want to pursue. To maintain pure focus, you got to, I think the first thing, and this is a hard question because I don't have a clear answer, mm-hmm. but I've been thinking about it. And it, it, I guess in short, here's what I'm going to say. To have pure focus, you have to, number one, understand what it is that you're, you're, you're going after. Mm-hmm. And does the cost, you know, to get there, mm-hmm. are you willing to, to pay that cost. Mm-hmm. Second thing is you have to eliminate all the distractions. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that could be going out. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. It could be, you know, hanging out with your friends randomly, dinners, whatever it is. Like, yeah. The more distractions you can eliminate, the more focus you will have. Yeah. And the and then, you know, ultimately focus comes from discipline. Yeah. Are you disciplined? Mm-hmm. You know, and then I guess the last thing going is, are your standards built and implemented in a way that will allow you to focus? For sure, I, like I'm writing a book. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, how's that go? <laughs> I got like one page. <laughs> nice, nice. I, think I have I have like the first, I have the prologue and the chapter done. Chapter <laughs> one. I don't know how many. I think it's gonna be like twelve chapters. Something like that. Nice, nice. It's not gonna be a long book. Easy read, but. You asked about focus, and I and I went back to the book because I'm not a writer. Yeah, I'm terrible at writing. Yeah, I'm more of a speaker. But I told myself two hours a week mm-hmm. dedicated to the book. Yeah, so that's that's my standard. Yeah. Just two hours a week. I know what I'm what I'm capable of, and I know how many hours I have in a week, and I know how much free time or what I'm going to give up to get those two hours back. Yeah, and in those two hours, I just sit there, mm-hmm. no distraction. For sure. No TV, no YouTube, and I just write. Yeah, for sure. That's it, dude. It fucking sucks. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not having. I'm not like sitting there like, oh, I'm having so much fun. No, my standard for the for this book is two hours a week until it's done. Yeah, and then I, was, I just dedicate my time to it. So yeah, I spent I spent about an hour yesterday. I got like a page, and then nice. probably another hour for uh, nice. another page. This uh, I'm gonna do it on Thursday, but. I did. I did find out that you know, on Microsoft Word, yeah, that that page when you translate it to a book, because I'm gonna make the book a little bit smaller, yeah. it's probably equivalent to two pages, nice. maybe even three pages, dude. Nice, depends nice. on the font, nice. you know. So it's gonna be like I mean, a, I'm, like I'm a like, kids book. <laughs> I'm thinking it's gonna be like I don't know, maybe a hundred pages, probably. Dude, I, you got it, man. You got it. Bro. Yeah, dude. Hey, you never know. You put a couple. See. You put a couple pictures, and boom, you got a hundred something page yeah. book. Hey, you might get over the curve, and you might be like, oh, this is hella fun. Just start. Maybe you know. Start Mark Twain. That yeah. Guy. So that's how you, you maintain focus. <laughs> yeah. Guys. But what I like what you said is, is, um, you know, cutting off the distractions and also creating, uh, the standard for, you know, for focus. Right. So yeah. whether it's being like, okay, time blocking your day for, it's like, okay, we have to do this to accelerate the business. Right. The distractions part, cutting them off. What, what I think would be helpful too, is to plan all the distractions after you hit your big goal. Right. So it's like, oh, like, I can't wait till after the book's done. Then we're going to go celebrate. We're going to have the or launch after party. I spend that hour, I can go watch an hour of TV. Oh, yeah. Even that. Like that. Super simple. Basic, super know? simple. Yep. Super, like, easy reward. Um, I feel like people are allowing distractions and thinking about, like, yeah. oh, it'd be better into this. But you're forgetting what you really wanted is what you started in the first place. Right. Yep. Yep. 
I like agree it. more. I like it, guys. So that was a quick one for you. That was actually kind of longer. It was a little 20 minutes, but. Yeah, man. Appreciate you guys. Thank Share you. Share this with your friends. Do it. Give us a like. Give us a comment. If you got any questions you want us to answer, just feel free. Drop it on our YouTube. Drop it in our email. We're coming out with a newsletter that we're working on, guys. So exactly. everybody who's listening to the Spotify, hop on that because you'll have direct access to everything, exclusive content, you name it. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.